This is a 1954 RCA CT100, and this is kind of thought of as the first color TV sold. And you might have seen this pop up on uh, some of the Facebook television groups lately. And um, this is part of an estate, and I'm here to check it out for a fellow collector who was lucky enough to pick this up. And Garrett here is going to tell us a little bit about uh, the gentleman that owned this. So, Well, this was owned by Vernon Lim. And Vernon was, uh, I was friends with his son, Bill. We went to high school together. Um, so I've known the family for about 50 years now. And um, this is one of the ones, he was a electronics engineer for Hughes Aircraft. But in the 50s, he was also a TV repairman. So when this came out, he thought this was a pretty neat thing and he got one. Um, and my understanding is this was the family TV up until much better things came out and uh, he said it was still working. So it's, uh, it's rather a bit of a collector's item, a, something from the 50s. Um, there was lots of other parts and things. And as you see, it's kind of a furniture piece. They built nice cabinets around them back then. And uh, it is, you know, long before the age of remotes. It's got off on volume and channel selector and tuning. That's about it. So they're, they're pretty fun little things. Pretty interesting uh, piece of Americana. So it, it, for me, it kind of touches close to home because I grew up in a neighborhood sort of close to here in Torrance. And uh, I grew up around several engineers that worked for Hughes Aircraft, and they were just brilliant people. And so much of what I have learned uh, came from their knowledge. And uh, they took a lot of time and spent a lot of time. So what we're going to do here is we're going to analyze the, the CRT because these uh, are notorious for having bad seals and losing their vacuum, air intrusion. So we're going to take a look at the getters and maybe an overall inspection. It sounds like it might have some hours on it, huh? Yeah. They use this as a family TV quite a bit. So let's, uh, we'll turn it around. Definitely the knobs are missing. Someone got their, uh, someone got their money's worth out of this. All right, let's spin it around and we'll take a look in the back. Again, RCA CT100. Sort of widely considered the first color television marketed. I'm sure this was a pretty rare exclusive thing to have. CTC2. I think that's what that says and it looks like all the looks like all the tubes are there well wow, look at that big doorknob capacitor so what I'm looking for oh yeah it looks like it does have a getter there Okay, what a getter is, is it's a uh, chemical thing that they flash when they put the CRT, when they seal it and suck all the air in, out of it and bake it. See that little spot right on top there? You can see it better in the camera. See that little round dot right there? So that Basically, if there's air intrusion, that will either turn white or vanish. And I think there's one. Yeah, there's one on the bottom, too. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on the ground and try and look up through the bottom. So, I don't know if I mentioned what the idea here was, is that if the getters look good and the CRT had a chance, uh, I'm gonna take the TV and pull the CRT out and ship it separately. 
So. Okay, here we go. These are Recapper's Dream. This video is in 4K too, which this television had no idea what 4K would ever have been. Okay, pause. Another thing you can look at is the uh, condition of this, where the focus pin is, and there's usually a lot of burn there, and I don't see any. So, um, probably going to apply a couple volts to this with a battery and see if the filaments illuminate, if we can get down in here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we got our little lithium iron phosphate pack here. So we'll do six volts on pins one and 20, which look like they're right on either side of the, uh, the identifying mark there. Okay, well we do have our, um, we do have our little grain of wheat lamp there. So I'm gonna put three volts on it now, there was never, that I'm aware of, there was never an adapter made for this CRT for any so common CRT tester. So I have to use a universal, but I don't really don't want to do that in this specific location. So I'm going to apply three volts here, and we'll see if we get any illumination, uh, which would indicate, I don't know if it's going to be enough, but here we go. Three volts through those really lossy clip leads might not be enough. So I'm gonna to go to six volts here. There we go. Now if it had air in it, uh, those would not light up like that. I had to step outside and include this in the video. This is just such a thing of beauty. I just can't imagine why someone wouldn't jump on taking this. How about this right here? I mean, needs a little work, but wow. This just says it all right here. This, this just really seals the deal. This gentleman had quite the workshop and unfortunately I missed the estate sale. Not that I need any more, but, but look at this. Yeah, all these old American-made capacitors, I would definitely put in an offer on those if you want to. Bigger ones. Oh, yeah. It's all the mil-spec stuff. Must have hijacked some stuff from work. <laughs> those are... Uh... Those are little, mil, little, uh, no, those are little capacitors. I forget what okay. they, monolithic, I think is what they call those. They're um, okay. aerospace stuff. Okay. Resistors. Crystals, resistors. He had a whole case of Nixie tubes. Oh. Don't make me suffer, please. Well, he's forgotten. All very neatly. Neatly by, by value. Capacitor. 
<clears throat> plastic capacitors in Chicago. What's the value on that? We don't chew microfarads. 30,000 Oh, volts. 30 kilovolt. Boy, yeah. you could charge that up and give someone a real surprise. <laughs> yep. Tube sockets. I don't know what those I are. I don't know what that Inductors, is. Inductors, little transformers. It looks like a coil of some kind. Perhaps. What is that one? Don't know. That is an image orthicon, I believe. It's like the reverse of a CRT. It, it goes oh. in a camera. Okay. 2C39A, 69 date code. So I've been chatting with the, the guy that purchased this, the fellow collector that purchased this, and he's pretty excited. Um, Pretty excited here. In fact, he's blowing my phone up right now. So, so I'm gonna take it right now, and uh, you want me to load it face down? Is that how you want me to transport it? That would be terrific, Dan. Okay, and um, and then what I'll do is I'll separate it, and we'll we'll ship the CRT separate, and you and I can talk about how you'd like that packed. Okay. Oh, definitely. Yeah, thank you for letting me share it. I think uh, people will, will enjoy it. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up and get this on the road because this, uh, I'm holding somebody's dinner up here. So. Yeah, don't worry. All right, cool. Let me get it loaded up and I'll, we'll chat soon. Sounds real good, Dan. I really appreciate it. No problem. So there it is, 1954 CT100. Looks like it's restorable. It's going to a great home, someone who's familiar with these sets. And um, good deal. So we'll get it loaded up here and gently caress it. This is the real moment of truth here. Uh, this did sound like it was a high hour set from the way that 